Another episode of redoing the interior on the 79 Corvette. So I've been painting the interior panels and naturally while doing this came across some of this. So this is some rust on the birdcage. Now this is a little more than surface, but this is, yeah, it, it left a bunch of rust chunks everywhere. We're gonna deal with it. And yeah, that's what we're gonna tackle in this video. So I need to take off the chrome trim up here to make sure there's none on the top side. And if there is, we're gonna treat it. As you see, I already have the seats out. I'm working on pulling the carpet out. My plan is to go over this. Uh, once I neutralize it, I'm gonna use POR 15 or POR 15 paint over rust. Gonna use that, but I want the carpet out of here. Since this is a brand new carpet, I don't wanna risk getting anything on it. And then we're going to see what we can do about covering the dash, but let's get the chrome piece off. Okay, got all the screws off except for this one right here. This one was stripped out before I could even get to it, so not much I can do. I'm going to have to drill it out. And then back here, there's two rivets, so I got to drill the rivet heads off to get that exposed. And then I looked up online and apparently there's some glue or some sort of adhesive so I'm gonna have to peel that off now I worked on getting this a pillar off the trim panel and it came off just fine it's a nice tight fit but if you see the rust from the top of the windshield frame or the birdcage it stopped there which is good that's good news that it's not all the way down um, the inside here looks good this is pretty much just surface now when we get down here to where the VIN is, this is where we start getting into more rust and the heavy rust. So I'm curious if there's some rust down here where I can't see. Now here in the driver's side body mount area, this area is pretty good. You know, this is one of the areas they tell you to check for birdcage rust and it's pretty good all along here. Um, you can see the bolt looks somewhat like a bowl but it's definitely rusted but i'd say that's pretty normal so all in all rust wise you know like looking at that body mount area that's not too bad this is really good um this is my worst of it but then there's more down here and we got to find out if there's more where we can't see i'm really curious about that side because this is the side that the t-top leaked so this car sat for 20 years if you don't know in california which explains why it didn't just completely rot in half, but did sit for 20 years with a leaky T-top, so I'm curious to see what this side looks like. Now back to this, because there's stuff that I can't see. Now I was planning on touching up the dash anyways in my interior redoing, but I don't have the budget to replace the dash. I really didn't want to pull the dash unless I was going to replace it, but I, I want to get to the bottom of this and see where it all goes. So I think I'm going to end up pulling the dash just to make sure I get I treat all the rust that is there. Okay, got the piece removed and once again it stopped right about here. And then this is just perfect. And a little in the same area. Well, actually that looks a little more than a little but so some there, but I mean this part is perfect, the A-pillar, so that's great news. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright, we're going to drill out the rivet. I got a drill bit that's just barely bigger than the size. We'll go slow and stay straight. The back rivet's drilled out real nice. That was all good. We got the front off. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned, but this screw we had to drill out. As you see, I just drilled the head off. Got into the chrome finish a little bit, but it's okay. Now, what you're seeing here are these chunks and just disgusting stuff. This would be, so this panel was held on with tape instead of an adhesive. This would be like some sort of adhesive tape and it just dried out over the years. But, so this is what it looks like fully removed. As you see, we look pretty good. Um, looks like there might be some right here. We'll investigate. But up here, this looks all just surface rust, nothing major. Uh, really good news, really good find. Now one last trim piece to remove, and that would be the corner pieces on this side and that side. Now, 
if you've looked up these pieces, these kind of have a reputation. Um, they have two screws here that are easy to see. These were loose, they're easy to get to. Now apparently there's a hidden screw, maybe two, that you almost have to remove the windshield to get to. And I think there's one here once you take out this pillar piece. Now this one is known for if you put your screwdriver in the wrong spot or your, the screw in the wrong spot, you crack your windshield. It's pretty common, it's been pretty infamous online just doing some research. So I am going to save my windshield. I'm gonna opt to save it. I'm not gonna tackle removing these and especially since the rust did not make it that way. You know, we have some here, so maybe we have a little bit on the top side, but I think they'll be all right. Um, and then I guess we can even look through and I don't see any, but I think we're good. We're able to get away with not doing that spot. It'll be okay. All right, now let's take off the sun visors just to give me extra room to make sure I don't get paint on them. So I'm gonna take my thin screwdriver pop this little beauty ring off. Now we have this piece here. I'll show you what it looks like once I get it removed. But So I'm gonna need two hands. Gonna hit this down, hit the little clips, pull it out. All right, once it's all the way up, we can lift it out. Take out the spring. And now to remove this, we just wiggle it out. And as you wiggle it, it drops lower and lower until finally it will pop out. There we go. And that's how easy it is to remove a sun visor. Okay, I want to take off this rear view mirror because it will make it easier to paint the areas up top. So, taking a T8 Torx bit, it might be an Allen, but this seems to be working. And I can't find my smaller ratchet, so using this big one but apparently this is all I need to take this off. So there I go, just remove that set screw and this pops off. The adhesive thing is still there. We're not going to touch that. We can just take this off and place this aside. Took out the center gauge cluster. Uh, so now I just got to unhook the wiring and then this should slide right out. Thinking about removing this, not sure. We might leave it. Well, I went ahead and took the steering wheel off. It's very simple, so I've done it before on this channel, but taking it off, gonna get these pieces painted up so when they get put on, they'll look good. Now, we'll have to do something about the column because the column needs some paint too. Maybe we'll end up pulling the column out, but we're trying to get the dash out. Taking the steering wheel just makes it easier to pull the dash out. Now we have the center console out. I have the inside of the glove box out. Let's see what else we need to remove the dash. I'm really hoping when we remove it we don't create too much damage. So I'm trying to reuse this dash. I have no idea what else is holding this dash on so I'm just gonna take off the easy screws that I see. So like there's a couple on the side here and here. There's one here. There's one on the other side. And then we'll just keep looking around on the edges uh, see if there's any screws on the edges. So I removed all the little screws here, and this should pop right off. You'll see on the right side, mine is pretty destroyed. So let's see if I can repair that. It's pretty beat up though. Let's see if we can repair this and polish up the, the acrylic lens. I have all the bolts off, now it's just a matter of pulling it out. Now these dashes are very tight in the corners so it's a struggle now mine is all cracked up so the corner of mine came off as one piece whatever so now that made it easy for me to remove it but if I fix it or go with a different dash it's going to be difficult to install either way taking off the headlight switch here so this bracket thing pull the headlights out this spins with the screwdriver and that unthreaded. Now I think I can remove this and then pop this out. And then we'll have to do something about this. So we got the headlight switch out. Now to, to remove it, there's a button right here. This was this will be on the bottom. You press this. You gotta press it kind of hard. 
and then while you press that, you can pull this straight out. And there you go. And if you didn't already, you have to loosen this first. All right, so we got the speaker out on the passenger side, and just take a look at the wiring here. So this was just sitting in the sun for 20 years. This whole speaker is just destroyed. So no chance of reusing these speakers. All right, there they go. So we should have everything off the dash now. Both edges are pulled forward. Now it should just come right out. Okay, working on taking off the gauge cluster here. So I got the the lens, or not the lens, but the black trim cover off. Now taking out the actual gauges. This is a quarter inch. So we'll take that out, and then we should be able to pull this out all the way. So I just took some time to clean up all my tools and whatnot out of here. So it's almost clean. I still got to clean off that side. I took off the the chrome things here that where the latch of the t-top goes into so now I'm working on taking all of these off and just the finishing touches and then we're ready to start stripping off the rest of the paint here so we'll take all these off all the way around everywhere I can get to again we're not gonna worry about this just because I don't want to break the windshield I don't want to risk breaking the windshield or anything like that um, it might take off more behind the dash, but I, I just want to get started on stripping off this metal and see how easy it is. Or not easy. So the game plan here is I'm going to do what I can see. Now what I can't see requires the windshield to be removed. I would love to remove the windshield. I just I don't trust my ability to do it right now. I'm going to wait to do that later on down the road. But if I remove the windshield, then I can tackle all the stuff that I can't see now. I don't need to get back here so just gonna do what I can do now since I have the dash removed um, so that means stopping to about here now this tape line is one to keep the PR off of the windshield when I eventually do it but mainly it's so right now I'm taking my wire wheel on my drill and I'm trying to scrape off all the loose, loose rust um, so I I'm mainly using it to prevent me from scratching my windshield up. Um, as you see, there's a lot to do. But So I already started it here. And you can see the painted stuff now showing metal. That's good. That's what we want. We're going to probably get it all more metal-like. Now, here is the difference between what I've hit with my wire wheel and what I haven't. So as you see, this, pretty loose, pretty flaky, pretty bad. Here is what I've hit. Now, here we can see, it. now that we've done it with the wire wheel, we can see better idea what we're working with. So we got some holes, we got some pitting, but uh, the rest of the metal is solid. That is good, but, you know, this is still not ideal. Uh, but we're just going to keep moving along with our plan here. Wire wheel the rest of this, uh, get it to a point where we're happy with, and then we can go forward. All right, making good progress. We got the top part all good and the top side. The sides are good. Now I'm working on this part over here. So I got the corners here. I probably want to double check because the part by the windshield is hard to get to. But I'm making the decision. Like I said earlier, I'm trying to do everything that I can do now. There's stuff of the birdcage that I just can't see until I remove the windshield and the front clip. And I'm trying to not do that now. I'm, that's not in the scope of what I'm doing now. So instead, I want to take advantage. I have the dash off. Let's do everything I can now. So that means this part of the birdcage that I can see, I want to give a go at the painting. That means I need to drop this HVAC stuff, some of the wiring that's attached to the bird cage top area or I guess this would be like a dash support and then uh, this steering column this brackets right here I think I'm gonna drop the steering column uh, maybe not pull it out we'll see if it's super easy to pull out I'll pull it out that way I can paint it out of the car but we'll drop it drop this 
and be able to strip all the paint and rust back here. So I'm struggling to take out this piece. This is like a bracket that holds the steering column to it. Now I disconnected this bracket from the bracket that the steering column bolts to and there was two more bolts in the very back that were really hard to get to. I had to use a wrench, um, a 13 millimeter or whatever that is in Imperial. But So this bracket is finally coming out now. I, I might have to loosen them a little bit more in the back. But it, it might, might have just been easier to just drop the steering column, honestly. But uh, we got it out. All right, it's a new day. We have the metal all prepped sanded the loose rust off with the wire wheel basically. Now I have got this kit and this was before my scope creeped. Now I was originally only planning to do the underside the bad parts here that you see but since we have the dash part I might as well cut the whole dash or the whole birdcage area behind the dash. So I'm gonna be coating down by the body mount I'm not going to do in the body mount, I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm going to do down by the body mount all the way up along the edge here of this dash support area. Same thing down here. going to do the A pillars and this pillar down here. We'll get the T-tops, we'll do the back, but I'll do the backs later, uh, maybe in a separate video, and we'll get the tops for sure. And so, due to this scope creep, this is all the rust coating I have, preventive coating, for fluid ounces. And this might have been enough for just the windshield area, but for the whole thing, I highly doubt it. <laughs> Especially the back. So I'm going to need to order some up. Unfortunately, I have to order it online, so it's going to take a while. So we're going to get done what we can get done with this. Now, my plan is to hit the harder reach areas with this, that being the inside of the dash, the underside, the bottom side. We're going to try to get as much of that done as possible, but we might as well clean at least the whole windshield frame area while we're here. So just diluted some of the cleaner degreaser, said four parts water to one of that, so this will work. This is just an empty spray bottle I had, so we'll spray this. Then uh, it says to keep it wet for 10 to 15 minutes and then we can wipe it off with water. Alright, so I'm just going around spraying these areas. You can see some of the dirt that's coming off of it. And that's all it is to it. It's nice and wet. We're just going to keep it wet, make sure it stays wet for about 10 minutes. And then I'll show you how we rinse it off. Okay, now the directions say to hose it off. Now, I can't put a hose in here. Obviously, I'm going to ruin stuff. So, squirt bottle with water. Just going to drench the water off, and then we'll use a rag to wipe it off fully. So, I dumped the metal prep into this spray bottle I had. You see it's purplish. We're going to hit the bottom here. We'll do the tops if we can, but mainly, I think mainly we'll just hit the bottom, see how it does. So we'll do an area we can see first, just to see what happens. So it sprays pretty good. It says keep it wet for 10 to 15 minutes. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Hit the whole thing. Okay, now I am rinsing it off, as you can see. There's a white powder residue that's normal, so I decided just do the whole frame, the windshield birdcage frame area. Uh, I'm just going to be real aggressive with this water, just try to get it all off, and then I have a rag that I'm going to use to wipe later. And then get these spots down here. Okay, that should be good. Now I'm just going to take the rag and just try to wipe everything off. Alright, got my can of the Pour 15. It came with Bristol and a foam brush. I'm thinking this is probably the better move, but we'll see. So, my plan is just to hit the bottom areas here where you don't see, and same over there first. 
if that works we'll mark our way up and we'll keep going until we run out of this coating i imagine we'll run out but we'll see now i did tape all along this is fresh tape it's not water soaked or anything so we're fully dry to the touch it only took about an hour and a half which is great so let's get going okay so i got done what i wanted to get done now before i show you a close-up on that we got some on the door panels and i'm going to show you don't worry if this happens i just sprayed a little bit of brake clean on this rag and it just wiped right off the key is that this is not dried yet so solvents can remove it once it dries nothing's removing it so you got to get on it early all right let's take a look at our work and as you can see nice glossy black pretty uniform everywhere even got the underside of this dash support so this is the first court coat they say it had put two coats on so we'll put a second coat on some of the spots are pretty heavy I'm sure there's gonna be some runs but you're never gonna see this so I don't really care too much how it looks just as long as it coats nice uh, so putting down the painters tarp was a great idea uh, as you can see it is dripping um, and we were dripping while we were applying it so we kept the inside of the car pretty well and overall it's just looking pretty good now I only did this bottom area the body mount dash support body mount out of that four ounce can I ended up using just about half of it so I decided to stop where I did that way I can do another coat now the other coat is gonna be another light coat so I should have a little bit left over but you know I wanted to be safe to stop there now I'm gonna need to order more what I still need to do is the A pillars uh, the top mount here the T frame or the T top mount and then this I think it's the C pillar or the B pillar one of those so I need to do all this and just simply two ounces of paint plus a second coat not enough so I'm gonna need to order another one and I kind of don't think four ounces is enough to do everything it might just barely barely be enough but I'm gonna try to be safe I'm gonna order I think it's a pint um, 16 ounces instead that should give me plenty plenty and then I don't have to rush and worry about <laughs> not having enough now I used about three quarters of the metal prep spray so we have about a quarter of it left um, I'm gonna need more of this so gonna order some as well but Overall, that kit honestly was a pretty good deal for everything I got. I'm surprised how well four ounces of that coating really carried. It said six, six square feet of coverage, and that kind of sem seemed like a little bit more. So overall, pretty happy with the kit so far. It's been a few days, but the poor 15 has dried. And take a look. So you saw I only did the bottom half. Uh, just because I am nearly out so that little four ounce can got me this entire bottom half and I have like almost an ounce left just under an ounce left so we could have done a little more but we ordered more we're gonna tackle this in part two of this but take a look at how it turned out now black is fortunately hard to tell hard to see on camera but with my light here looks pretty good definitely like you know orange peely texture -y, but you're never gonna see this and it looks really good I am really surprised with how poor 15 turned out um, looks like we got if you can see there's some tiny run here a little bit over here but overall it looks pretty dang good So I cleaned the brush off with just brake cleaner. I mean, you can use lacquer thinner too to get better result. And this brush would probably be usable, but I'm just gonna get a new brush when I do it again. Now I put some of this, just whatever kind of bag I had laying around, um, and then close the top on it, hammer it down, and it should in theory be good. But like I said, there's not much left over. We have a pint of Pour 15 on the way, and that should get me the rest, the A pillars, the top of the windshield, the T top center, and I'm planning on doing the backsides. 
so that should get me pretty covered but we still have some work to do now the front has all been prepped the back has not and uh, not all the t-top has like the bottom part has not been prepped so next video I'm gonna try to show you better how I prepped for poor 15 and then hopefully I can show you actually me putting the poor 15 on um, but overall we got a lot done we took dash out which was pretty massive in itself even though removing the dash wasn't too bad it's just there's a lot going on and now since we have the dashed out we would need to take advantage of this so we gotta replace whatever we can replace while this is out um, and there is just so much wiring in here aftermarket wiring that I need to make the decision whether I just want to pull it or what because uh, if I pull it I risk uh, pulling something that was necessary that I don't know what it does and then I have to trace wires and it's a mess but there's a lot of stuff in here like an aftermarket alarm a radio wiring because this had a full sound system in it back in the day but anyways thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one let me know what you think of the poor 15.